Hi everyone, today let's talk about the GDP data, then we'll get into these charts that were actually pretty choppy during the session and momentum continuing to fade. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel, and let's get started. So GDP data came in much better than expected at a 3% rate here for second quarter, absolutely faster than expected here you can see. The annualized rate we were looking for was 2.9, third quarter much higher than expected 1.4%, which was actually revised up to 1.6%, so that was another good number there. And then looking at the GDP over time here, 1.6 the previous, like we talked about, revised up from 1.4, 3% here. The article said 2.9. I've seen other places that said 3 was okay. But really what this is saying is in line with what Fed Powell is saying, good shape for the economy. We did see the 50 basis point cut in September, which again, I thought was a little bit aggressive, especially when we're seeing GDP numbers like this. But this is again in line with what Fed Powell had been saying, which now seems like it's most likely we're going to get 25 basis points if it cut it all in November. And we'll take a look at the Fed futures later, but overall pretty good. And Atlanta Fed GDP now was talking about 2.9 and now we're getting 3%. So everything continues to look a little better than expected on the economic front. Moving over to fear and greed, we're all the way up to a 72. So just a few points off of those extreme greed conditions. Once we get there, it doesn't mean we're going to flip immediately. You can see we've had periods where we stayed here for a very long time before selling off. But usually once you get here, it doesn't go too much higher than that 75 to 80 range. So we're getting very, very close to that metric there. Extreme greed on all the major indicators momentum strength and breadth put call ratio also extreme greed now as this dips all the way to a 0.67 and then volatility continuing to sit right in this 14 to 15 range safe haven demand greed as well and now even junk bonds moving into regular fear this had been the lone laggard sitting in extreme fear but now everything is above extreme fear with most of the metrics sitting in extreme greed moving over to the economic calendar here for thursday you can see core durable goods much better than expected 0.5 versus 0.1 previous number also revised up core PCE prices in line you like to see that headline durable goods also much better than expected minus 0.28 ended up getting a flat number there previous number also revised up slightly GDP data they're saying in line here again Q2 price index revised down a little bit again that's good for the inflation side initial jobless claims continues to trend lower so that's good as well pending home sales a little bit of a laggard there seven-year note auction pretty much in line fed balance sheet reduced by a pretty substantial number almost 30 billion there pretty interesting and then looking at friday pce data here inflation so you got core number 0.2 headline number 0.2 year over year 2.3 versus 2.5 so trending a little bit lower personal spending continues to decline to 0.3 versus 0.5 and then all of the inflation data from michigan one year and five year continuing to watch those as well as Atlanta Fed GDP, you'd like to see that come out at 0.3 as well. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the daily, you can see we're still holding this trend line, almost touched it again. Momentum still fading, but price action still building. RSI going higher, a little bit higher volume on the day. Saw some interesting price action on the short time frame, but either way, we did get that acceleration. The NASDAQ looked like it was going to do it. The SPY didn't really, but it ended up coming along for the rally. So this is all time highs. There's really nothing up here in terms of levels. I do have one really far away. I don't know if we're going to get that high up into the 6,000s, but right now, now we're at all-time highs in price discovery everything looks good and then looking at the short time frames here you can see that massive gap up to start the session gave it all back hit the 55 EMA which continues to be the support level at 571.07 every time we touch that we do find a little bit of strength just like we did here and yesterday and the day before so 55 EMA currently trend support at 571.07 and then after hours everything continues to look okay still very much an uptrend my guess is that this will probably push back to that high from the pre-market about another two dollars higher and then we'll see what happens from there like i said everything continues to look pretty good slow grinding price action even with that momentum fading rsi still looks okay moving over to the tasty charts here again still in this uptrend we did see an expansion of the atr bands we were seeing those contract and flatten out but we did see a slight expansion lower bands kind of trending higher upper bands flattening out we're back above that 9 EMA which is 572.01 you'd like to see that hold on the four hour a little bit of volume nothing crazy hit that second ATR band pulled back to the first one so it seems like we're still stuck in that range still a little better than what we were seeing here in terms of grinding price action but everything looks okay and like I said on the previous charts here that previous high is going to be your price target up at that second ATR band right around 574.60 
Moving over to the NASDAQ, similar thesis here, gap up and fall. We saw that grinding price action just like on the SPY. I expected this to jump, and sure enough, it did. A little bit more powerful than I would have thought, but we ended up giving some of that back. Momentum back to bullish, RSI back to bullish. Still looking for this price target up here at the trend at 20,587, and that would give you the gap fill back to the 16th and actually take you pretty much right to these highs, actually back to all-time highs. So... We'll see if we get there. Everything continues to look good on the NASDAQ. And then you can see that shorter time frame price action and the levels here. So got above the level after hours at 486.84. Huge gap to the next one, 492. Broke that level, pushed right back to support. Again, 55 EMA on the hourly chart. Touched this level. A little bit choppy on the level, so that would have been a little bit hard to trade if you're trying to trade it precisely at that level. I ended up leaving it, watching it chop here, and then held it into the close. So I did okay, really not making Making any adjustments even though I technically would have been stopped out I ended up holding because I was watching that 55 EMA momentum starting to swing back to bullish RSI looks a little bit more bearish but price action is king 492 is the next level another three dollars higher potentially in tomorrow's session moving over to the tasty charts here for the Nasdaq you can see we're still on that 8 EMA that continues to be support on the four hour chart that is 489.10 as long as we continue to hold that on a closing basis for the four hour we should be in good shape a little bit of volume a little bit more than the previous two days in terms of levels you got that second atr band 491.72 pretty much in line with 492 and then that upper band we hit on that up push that level is up at 494.58 maybe we see that strong of a push tomorrow that'd be about one percent i don't know if that's going to happen but that would be your upper limit at least in my opinion Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, Russell did a little bit better, half a percent up coming off of this trend line here, gapped up and fell, so kind of inside, right at that highly traded zone. Didn't really break the structure, just kind of a relief rally in my opinion. You can see momentum still fading, RSI is just barely above the SMA, it's sitting right on top of it. If it's going to bounce, you need to see it do it here, just like we said on the trend line. If this broke, it looked quite bearish. As long as it held, we're in good shape. And so far, we're still holding, so still slightly bullish there. And then looking at the Dow, inside candle again. Big down candle yesterday, that's definitely concerning. If we see kind of two or three grinding price actions and then a breakdown, that could be very concerning. Right now, it's still holding up. Momentum basically flat, not great. RSI still bouncing off the SMA, still slightly bullish there, so... Really nothing's changed, still grinding in this price action. Caught a bounce off that 9 EMA on the daily chart yesterday to resume this grinding price action above the trend line here. Current trend support around 421.01. Moving over to the MAG7. MAG7 continues to grind higher. Big wick high, but ended up giving it all back and finishing slightly negative. 0.15 to the downside. Momentum stepping down for two days in a row there. Almost hitting overbought conditions. It seems to be one of those continuously grinding price actions, even with the momentum fading. So we could see this grind a little bit further. The price target is still up here at 289.64 or so. Maybe a little bit lower, 289.50, somewhere in there. Still looking for a test of that trend line. We're not really that close to it yet, with the potential for about three and a quarter percent higher, three percent somewhere in there. So everything still looks okay. A little bit concerned about that big rejection, not as strong as the major indices, but still looks okay in my opinion. It's finding a little bit of support here after pushing through this level, going back to that 15, 16 July candles, pulled back, holding it as support, and that should be a good push. Moving over to Micron and Intel. Both of these at least hit the price target. Micron obviously blew massively through it with their massive earnings. I was looking for a test of the 55, broke through both of these levels, hit right there at the 144, 113.55, and then gave a little bit back. Still holding support back here at the 19 to 20 August time frame. As long as that holds its support, you can definitely trade off of that. If it pulls back through there, your 200 would be support down at 105.51. Then we'll see what happens after that. Obviously very extended off of this massive move, but earnings can absolutely continue to push that. And then looking at Intel, we had this bottom here, saw the breakout here on the 20th, got the continuation to the 55 EMA. That was our first price target. Behind that, you have 25.14. If it can get through the 55, that's what I would be looking at. And right now that's at 24.04. So looking for that level to hold. Right now you're below it. So if you took profits, I totally understand. Moving over to Apple and Microsoft. Apple up about a half a percent. Really no change to this thesis. Still stuck between these two levels, 224.36 and 230. It's below the trend line, so that's a little bit bearish. Momentum a little bit bullish. RSI a little bit bullish. Really nothing moving here. Still waiting for clear direction on Apple. And then looking at Microsoft, tried to do what everything else did. Gapped up, fell right back into the middle of the range. Tested the level, 429.88. 
As long as that holds, you're still slightly bullish. Momentum fading, RSI breaking down a little bit, so that's concerning. After hours, it's up a little. If it fades through this level, still looking for a push down to 423. If it holds this level, looking for 440.72. Moving over to Tesla and Nvidia. Tesla up on the open and then fell down, ended up finishing negative 1%, below the level 255.44. We closed above it yesterday, we got a little bit of a continuation, couldn't hold it, and now we're back below it. So that's concerning. Below 255.44, we are a little bit bearish, as long as it holds it, looking for 264. So right now, 9 EMA would be your support, 242.17. Could certainly fall to that level, hold support, and then see what happens from there. Still very much a short-term bull trend, but still finding resistance at that key level. And then looking at NVIDIA, similarly here, 124.69, did get above it through big wicks into this consolidation, ended up finishing below it. Momentum still bullish, RSI still bullish, so this could certainly continue here, but looking for that 124.69 break, once we get there, 130.33 is back to the high of this consolidation, and that would be the price target after that. Moving over to Amazon, interesting, a little bit different thesis. It did try to go higher slightly, but ended up finishing minus 0.7, touched the 9 EMA, two bear candles in a row, momentum fading, RSI right at the SMA. This is critical zone here now, two bear days in a row, might see this break the nine. The level still is 188.61. 61. If that breaks, then we're looking back down to these levels around here, 182, 183, my level 181, 41, critical zone there. I think we could see a break and a big push to this next level. That would be a pretty decent move of around six points. And then looking at Alphabet, still in this consolidation, I still have a bearish thesis here just because of this overall trend. You can see very much a medium term downtrend. We've been falling since the beginning of July, so it's been several months of falling almost here all the way to the beginning of October. We're at the zone. We had a rally in here. I still think we're going to pull back at least to this 159, 160 area. But right now we're still in a consolidation, not giving super clear direction. Momentum fading RSI, slightly bullish, but looking for a little bit of a pullback at least to the SMA. Moving over to staples and discretionary. Staples still chopping, still holding the level. Tested it multiple days here. 82.53, multiple tests. Tested it again, still holding up in there. Momentum stepping towards bullish interesting haven't seen that in a while we've been downtrending here since 5 september pretty much here until 25 september so now we're here waiting to see if this is going to hold as long as it does we're still okay if it breaks down looking for the trend here around 81.60 and then looking at discretionaries we got that final push we hit the trend line gapped right to it almost to the penny and then fell right to support at 200.53 again almost to the penny closed just above it Momentum still fading, RSI overbought. My concern here is that this is the final gasp, right? So you had a really strong push, really strong consolidation. Let's go ahead and look at that a little closer here. Big push, consolidation, big push. Higher high, clearly at the trend. Finding rejection here, at least on the short time frame. Now the question is, is this going to grind and kind of roll over? Establish a higher low, at least maybe retest this previous high around 193. That would be about 6 to $7 lower, which is substantial. It's not nothing on discretion areas but this is a critical zone waiting to see what happens there and just zooming out here you can see we're almost to those all-time highs going back to December of 21 so discretion areas has had a run it's been a strong push even since this breakout that's been about seven almost eight percent there so critical zone waiting to see what happens at this level Moving over to oil and transports, oil continuing to crater down 2.4%, very, very strong move. We assumed that it was going to get to this 128 level at least, ended up pushing right to there, almost to the penny again, super critical level. Momentum's fading strongly, huge volume. My guess is that this is going to continue lower here back to the 124s. Definitely wouldn't get in the way of it, but so be patient. I do like oil eventually, but not right now. Waiting to get some structure. Let's go ahead and extend out that trend line. Pretty much in line with the next level here 124.13 now that we are back below 128 so watching that closely and then looking at transports here continuing to find resistance at that 69.29 level hit the highs right here on 19 september touched it again here today 26 september now we're waiting to see if this pulls back a little bit more 67.85 would be your support moving over to wood and gold both of these continue to be extremely powerful look at this move on wood and forestry here 1.89 percent very very strong move we're back above all of these highs going back to march as well as here in may got to zoom out all the way back here to june of 22 to see these kind of levels on wood it's been a long push 
really since the lows in the beginning of August, we've basically been uptrending, but clean breakout, everything looks very powerful. And I'll definitely have to add some levels, but look at wood going. So that's a good economic indicator. And interestingly enough, we do have gold continuing to go half a percent, still all time highs here, still looking for that 250 price target. Both of these look very strong. Moving over to Riot and Marathon. Both of these had a strong push. We said they were going to, and I just totally forgot about this trade, unfortunately. So finally did what we thought it was going to do and did get the push riot finished up four and a half got quite a bit higher than that all the way up to the eight area didn't quite touch the trend line but momentum and rsi bullish there could be more in it maybe certainly possible and then looking at marathon 8.5 percent very strong move momentum rsi huge volume coming in there hit the 55 ema that was the first price target next one would be that 18.78 level so looking for that zone you also have the 144 behind it at 18.93 so some levels in there certainly could go, but really this was the first breakout waiting to see if we can get continuation, maybe even up to that 200 up around 19.8, certainly possible. Moving over to 20 and 50 day breadth, we said if 20 day was going to hold, it needed to do it yesterday and look at these RSIs here right on the point, touch the SMA, caught a bounce like it needed to. Sure enough, it did right to the level 68.14, still below it. So waiting to see what happens there. Still technically a consolidation, still a little bit concerned about that price action on Wednesday as well as momentum fading, but a little bit of a head fake there yesterday. And then looking at 50 day, same thing there, huge down move, almost 7% lower and then 9% up today, back above the level, gapped through it, rallied, looking for that 83, 83 level once again, definitely a bit of a head fake there. So it happens, markets don't go in straight lines, but this is still technically an uptrend after that reversal after yesterday's price action. Momentum bullish, RSI, again, look at it, tested the SMA, caught a bounce off it like it needed to, so got the continuation, looking for that zone there. Moving over to the dollar, big fall off there, consolidation right at the 12 o'clock candle huge gap down caught a little bit of a bounce still right in the zone still finding support at the lows from 27 the low there was 100.51 we're at 100.56 so still finding support there no change thought we might get some continuation after that big up candle yesterday which seems to be a little bit of a head fake still below this 21 ema that's your current resistance at 101.14 Moving over to bonds, J&K still hovering, caught a little bit of an up move, almost tested the level, but not doing much of anything. RSI right there, again, very similar to some of these other charts we've been watching. Needs to hold if it's going to do it. Price action holding that 9 EMA at 97.51. And then looking at TLT, tested the level finally, touched the trend line, caught an inside candle, momentum, still very much bearish, but it seems like we might get a bit of a counter trend rally up to the SMA. That could give you a level up here, 99.18. And then it seems like we're going to get a little bit of a short term downtrend here, just extended, catch a little bit of a bounce, relief rally, and then we might see a lower high and a lower low potentially down to that 96.55 level. This has been a deep cut. Medium term is still an uptrend. Short term seems like a little bit of a downtrend. Moving over to the VIX, almost touched that 200 there at 14.81. Low of day was 14.9, so very close there. Still holding right in the same zone, caught a little bit of a bounce. Momentum stepping to bullish. Okay, interesting. You can see that here. Two bearish steps, one step towards bullish. That gets a little bit of a continuation here. That could be quite bearish, similar to what we ended up seeing here. So this could be the start. It's definitely depressed. Waiting to see what happens here in the next couple days something to watch for on the VIX moving over to my accounts I didn't do much of anything today which was good so markets ended up holding up quite well pretty much in line with what I was looking for made some decent money about $500 or so and then looking at the positions rolled this out and up to 219 for tomorrow it was at 218 today got pretty much max profit there for 97 cents for tomorrow so that gives me a little bit of room it's basically flat here after hours up just slightly and then looking at the queues here held this position didn't do anything this expires tomorrow so that's interesting it's right here at my max profit pretty much which is 489.67 we're below it by about 20 cents and after hours we're pretty much right at it so we'll see how that plays still potential for about another $130 left and then I can certainly roll this out to Monday as long as everything continues to look okay so still slightly bullish going into tomorrow's session waiting to see what happens everything still looks okay to the upside grinding slowly higher
Let me know down in the comment section what you think of the GDP data. Is it good data? Is it giving you some confidence in markets or are you still concerned? Do you think markets can go higher? Let me know. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.